Welcome back to Fujitsu Forum TV. You join us on the back end of day two. 12,500 delegates, 12,500 business leaders have traveled from more than 80 countries to descend in Munich and understand the latest challenges affecting business and society. It's not just delegates that travel a long way, but some of our colleagues too. Joining me before flights back to Canada and America, Dean Prolatza and Adam Steinberg, thank you both for making time. Let's talk AI. It's been a real theme out of Fujitsu Forum 2018. Uh, where do we apply AI? How do we use it? How do we impact businesses going forward? We're going to get into all of that. Um, AI has been hyped an awful lot. I don't think it's an, an overstatement to, to say that. But if we want to break past the hype and understand how it's going to impact businesses and answer challenges right now, where, where do we start? What, what, what's happening? How's AI making a massive difference with business today? It's art. Um, I think first of all, we, we have to recognize that data is massive. It's ubiquitous across businesses, ubiquitous across the enterprise. And I think more and more folks are starting to realize there's an opportunity to leverage data, to monetize data, to use data to improve uh, operations, but more importantly, to create new opportunities. Less than 0.5% of data is ever analyzed to date. So you think about the mountains, 0.5%, wow. less than 0.5% of data is ever analyzed. So you think about the mountains of data that we're already sitting on, as well as the mountains of data that are being created with the introduction of devices like IoT and, and a whole range of other devices whose primary purpose is to bring new data into the enterprise. There's a big motivation to leverage the, the latest trends, uh, particularly around artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning to see how we can leverage that data and turn it into opportunity. Yeah, and when you think about the kinds of data that are being, that's being created, most of the world's data, 80% of it, more or less, is unstructured. And uh, for decades, computing power, computing power was applied to structured data, and we're, we're pretty good at about using that in traditional analytics and advanced analytics of sorts. But now we, we, now we have the ability to understand the intent and the context of unstructured data formats of all kinds, image, documents, uh, spreadsheets and, and more, and uh, and to do that to augment decision making. So it's not about replacing decision making. The human's very important in that process, but the value that comes that that comes out of that of of that is those insights is what's uh, it's what's transforming companies and even disrupting industries. Do you think businesses understand why they should be applying AI, or is there still an education piece that has to happen? Oh, very much so. There's, I mean, this, we're very early on in this journey of, of applying AI to, to impact experience, the experience of an end user, be it a customer or an employee, to, to change companies for the better. And I, and I think that's, that's coming about with uh, better, the better understanding, more pervasive understanding of, of how AI is applied in business. So what is, what is the use case, right, uh, is a good way to cap, encapsulate the impact on, on, on business and society, and, what, what, and more importantly, to focus on the outcome uh, of, of that use case and how AI, amongst other emerging technologies, are applied. I think also, um, you mentioned the idea that there's a lot of hype around AI. There, there is a lot of hype, but there's also a lot of real use cases starting to be generated in the press. And so CIOs and business leaders from across the enterprise, from across industries, are really starting to get a taste of the impact that AI can make because they're hearing firsthand from customer references that are talking about value that's been created from AI. So I think, I think we're starting to see a much uh, larger pace of development and pace of understanding across the enterprise in regards to the potential for AI to really transform and drive that digital transformation process that we're also hearing so much about. And by the way, uh, the hype and, and sort of the, uh, the, the extent of the conversation that we're hearing at Fujitsu Forum, it's, it's big. But this is just a small um, microcosm of how big the conversation is globally across the enterprise. Uh, Fujitsu Forum is, is driving some of that change, but the enterprise around the world, AI is a, is a, is a, huge, a huge undertaking. There's been a bit of a theme coming out of the interviews, a lot of speakers saying that Technology needs to be working closer with the business, aligning better, the application of AI. I'm assuming the same problem exists? Yeah, yeah even more so. I mean, we know through Fujitsu Forum and for actually the last few years, we've been focusing on co-creation. And now this year with co-creation for success, the success comes from the direct involvement and engagement from 
our clients people. They know their business and they know their functions the best and it's their ingenuity, their ideas and their insights to, coupled with the technology enablement and the partnering with IT that really is, the, is one of the keys to success with AI. Hashtag love the problem. We love the problem. It's, it's, about, it's not about the solution as much as it is about the capability of Fujitsu through its 83 year history, 84 year history, of really getting deep into an understanding of customer problems and then using our collective experience in that co-creation mode to generate solutions using the best and brightest uh, technology solutions from around the world. Let's look at exciting developments going on in AI, Fujitsu Forum TV. We love hearing a bit of theater and drama that's going on. What's the most exciting examples of AI in play at the moment? Well, I, I, in no particular order. I mean, one that comes to mind is what we're, what we're doing to improve and impact the, the manufacturing quality process across a range, a wide range of manufacturers, applying deep learning and image analytics to optimize the process and inspection of really complex manufactured products, industrial products, such as wind, wind power turbines and other, uh, and, and blades and, and other industrial products, uh, we're able to not only improve and, and, and improve upon the defect detection, but also in the time that it takes for, for that process to occur. And, uh, and, and using, you know, using the, uh, that solution, we're also finding new extensions of how that can be applied to other type of uh, business solutions. For me, I'm excited about AI's impact in health. Um, okay. Like we're talking, we're talking about a healthcare sector that uh, is, is just hungry for change. Um, the problems associated with disparate data sources uh, and the volumes of, of disparate information and data points that are emerging on disease that have no real connection except if you're able to read volumes and volumes of data. Uh, and we're starting to see evidence of, of diagnoses uh, happening at a fraction of the, of the pace of a typical uh, GP's involvement with greater accuracy. Um, so I think we're only at the beginning and it's exciting in, in terms of human health, world health, in terms of some of the biggest challenges in health that we've always been struggling to, to address. The uh, in introducing an artificial intelligence driven analytical capability to those problems. I really feel very optimistic about the future in terms of being able to finally crack uh, some of these health challenges that have been a real problem for us around the world. Staying with that, so, I mean, that's an interesting point on, on healthcare. AI is going to impact many industries, but are there particular industries who are going to be affected more similar to healthcare? There is not an industry out there. We're convinced, and the research also proves, that won't be impacted by AI. Uh, for, the, the, for experience improvement, for, for societal impacts, for business uh, optimization and transformation, uh, every industry should be, and companies within them should be, uh, embarking on their journey right now with AI. And, and right now we have uh, AI at, at a nascent stage where a lot of the time it's the larger companies that are more mature in their adoption of technology that are able to access the benefits of artificial intelligence driven solutions, machine learning, deep learning, etc. But we're also starting to see a really interesting trend. There's algorithms that are starting to be introduced into the community that are, that are actually allowing for a much greater, much broader accessibility by smaller companies. So that's exciting. As these algorithms start to be generated, uh, other companies other than the large uh, icons have the potential to, to take advantage of those capabilities. Let's talk results. Chief execs love hearing about results as much as they like hearing about innovation. Where is where's Fujitsu delivering results with, with AI right now? And how quickly can a, a chief exec expect to see a return, whether that's monetary, efficiency, productivity? I think at the onset of any initiative around AI, and depending on their start, a company's starting point, it's really important to define what the outcome or the expected outcome is, and to quantify the the, the business or benefit that comes along with that. But the importance of, of 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 showing success is in getting started, in getting started with a uh, a a proof point that can easily be scaled and quickly scaled up, assuming that the results are are realized. So start small and scale fast. I think also um, the, the industry is, there's a lot of noise. Uh, like I think the last stat I read was something like 3,000 startups um, with billions of dollars that are being invested into the AI space creating niche solutions. And so that creates a very noisy, uh, frothy situation for decision makers. 
Um, and if you, if you think of Fujitsu's capabilities in terms of their history, our history and our, and our abilities around AI, ar around consulting, and around the integrated model of how AI fits across the entire data and, and IT stack, uh, as well as the business solutions, we have the ability to kind of weave our way through the noise and help, uh, in a trusted way, help decision makers make the decisions around which applications are going to be most useful for, for them. Um, I think the, uh, the the fair solution is is worth talking about in, in this regard, and maybe you could you could jump in on that one, Adam. Yeah, I mean, as as we you know discussed a little bit ago, the 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 ability to uh, to define what the understanding the current current process the current situation in our clients is a consultative led approach to uh, understanding the uh, the business problem in this case it was about inspection and quality and the time that it that it took to it takes to do that and then uh, the optimization opportunity of of decreasing the time and, and maintaining or improving upon the the uh, the defect uh, de detection there are other instances where we're looking at business processes and and uh, looking to to optimize that to augment decision making with with knowledge workers to provide them better access to uh, reliable and consistent information and be it in the healthcare field for providers or for knowledge workers in a field in a field service context and as 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 dean said there's Fujitsu is, can bring the, comp, the, the, the convergence of business process expertise, industry expertise, and the technology and innovation and the products along with it to bring a, uh, to be that trusted partner for our clients. And talk about results, this, uh, the Fujitsu uh, automated image recognition system that was implemented on this uh, uh, windmill blade defect analysis uh, problem was an 80% reduction in effort to do the job of inspecting these wind sh these uh, these wow. wind blades, so uh, we're talking. I mean, 80%. That's that's those are incredible numbers. That's the kind of thing that gets the attention of uh, decision makers. Indeed, there's clearly a lot of opportunity, plenty to be excited for. If I had to press you for for one element that business leaders may want to hear on how AI is going to change the world, what would it be? I know that's a heck of a question. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that for for business leaders should be looking at how their their workers their employees are going to can benefit from greater access to data and insights at scale right the volume of data that exists in either in institutions four walls and in their ecosystem provides a, a number of opportunities that frankly in many cases haven't yet been discovered so being wi being willing to take a risk prove it out scale fast from my point of view, one only needs to search AI solutions in Google uh, or any other search engine to see a whole bunch of solutions that have already been created that are going to change the world. But in terms of these executives that you're referring to, how's AI going to change their world? I guarantee you they should take a look at their competitors because somewhere within their competitive matrix, there is a competitor that's currently driving an ambitious AI project. And if they don't keep pace, catch up, uh, stay in the game, their business is going to be out of business. Fascinating. Thank you both. I dare say this one is going to get a lot of attention. We promised you a lot of insight on Fujitsu Forum TV, didn't we? Well, that one certainly delivered. There's plenty more to come today. We've still got interviews with the transport team. Boy, there's an industry amidst change at the moment. We're going to have a chat with one of our key sponsors, Citrix, and then closing today, security. If you're a chief executive, this really is a not to be missed interview. Let's just run through some of the stats to turn your, your head. Um, Within two years, it's forecast 20 billion devices are going to be connected to the internet. It's forecast 80% of data is going to flow through the cloud within the same time. Here's the kicker today. The cost of the cost lost to cyber crime, $610 billion. That number is only going to swell over the next two years. Unless you're an oligarch or have a blank check, you really cannot afford to miss this security interview. That's coming up at, 530, uh, at uh, 4.30 today. Stay with us for that one.